I'm Dr. Ann Mirabito, a professor in the Baylor MBA programs, and today our guest is alumnus Amber Roy. Amber is Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer at Triumph Business Camp Capital. Hello, Amber. Thanks for joining us today. And it's so great to see you, and thank you for taking some time to be with me. Absolutely. Amber, you've had such an exciting career. <laughs> Tell us about your career path. So I started off as a consultant at Countrywide, where I was working on a variety of just process improvement projects or looking for ways to take technologies to improve the business, to achieve the business goals. And through all of that, I wound up being a project manager for the Countrywide and Bank of America conversion. It was a really big project. It was something I did not want to do. But at the end of the day, I really feel like it was a pivotal point in my career that really opened a lot of doors for me. Um, after that project and that conversion, I supported and managed a lot of operational support teams for the remainder of my tenure at Bank of America. After that, I went on to Caliber Home Loans, where I spent six years managing various operational functions like vendor management, um, reporting analytics, uh, client, and client and customer experience and resolutions, as well as for acquisitions. And then I just joined Triumph here at the end of April. Exciting. Yes. It's been busy. What's motivated you? Challenges. I am a high achiever. I like something that I can sink my teeth into, a problem I can solve. Uh, but at the end of the day, I really want to make sure I'm providing value. How am I leading my teams well? How am I making a difference for people? How am I leaving the business a little bit better than where I when I came in? That makes sense. So you finished the Baylor EMBA program. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people feel transformed by the EMBA experience. How did the Baylor EMBA experience change you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it played a really critical role in just my understanding of the business. Um, you know, holistically, you get a, a glimpse of every part of the business, as well as being able to be a little bit more strategic leader. So when you go to college, you pick what your major is, right? What are you going to do? Are you going to do something in the medical field, or teaching, business, marketing, accounting? And then you go into your career and it's very specific to that. So I'm only doing accounting type activities throughout my career, right? When you go into the EMBA program, they give you all of the different parts of the business. So you're working on financial projects. You are doing a marketing project. You have to learn different ways to engage with HR. And so that really helped me see the business holistically. So as I transitioned into the role of COO, it's all about connecting the dots. It's understanding what are my operational teams doing? How does that impact our financials? What can my technology teams do to help us be more efficient and effective? How are the things and changes we're making from an HR perspective impacting our teams? So it's, been a, it's played a really critical role in just my career and the way I think about things. I think that's really interesting because when I talk to students, um, especially younger students who are thinking, why do I need to take marketing? I'm a marketing professor. Why do I need to take marketing if that's not going to be my career? Well, the point is, if you dream of having an entry level position for the rest of your life, then you don't need to learn other disciplines. But if your aspiration is to reach the C-suite, you need to understand how all of those functions work together, that holistic view that you're talking about. Absolutely. So let's talk about the C-suite. In the C-suite, uh, men outnumber women seven to one, according to a recent Morningstar report. Why do you think that is? This is 2021. 20, Why is it? Yeah. Um, well, I think it's our pipeline of women into the C-suite. I mean, we already see such a significant drop going from individual contributor manager, and then it continues to decrease from there. Um, a lot of women earlier in their careers um, are stepping away to make family, right, and, and support their family and do those things. And they don't feel a lot of times that they can have both the career and the, uh, the family life. And I will tell you, I attended a Bank of America Women's Leadership Program, and one of the executives said, you know, it's not about work-life balance. It's all about choices. And you have to be okay with the choices that you make every day. And, you know, I think a lot of women probably still feel held back or they don't have the right support that they need, maybe from their employer or it could be even from their spouse 
to be able to pursue their career and, and, and be able to do things. You can't do everything. They're like, you can do anything you want to do. You can't do everything. There's not one person that can do it. And so it is about choices from there. I think a lot of it also is about men are typically promoted based on, on potential and women are promoted based on performance. And so as you start to get through that, women just may not be considered or because of that, because of their performance, because they are stepping away to do something for their family, caring for an elderly or aging parent. Um, and so it's really important, I think, for people that are in the C-suite or even just senior leadership positions to be pulling up that chair for that woman. Men and women need to be doing it, um, promoting them, being a champion for them, encouraging them, supporting them in whatever way that they need it so that they can feel that they can, they can have both because you can. You know, what I really like about your insights are that you're coming from a perspective that people want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's those sort of accidental hidden biases we have that are what you said about being promoted based on potential, women based on performance. So I really like the way that you are framing it as an opportunity for all organizations to be stronger, that there's not a good guy or a bad guy. Right. So you've had this very successful career. What do you wish, what do you know now that you mm. do when you started out? Well, um, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of dedication and you have to be intentional. I think that's one of the most things that I've learned probably over the past year during COVID is intentionality. Um, there are things that happen and people get luck and you can make your way to the C-suite or get a promotion or anything like that um, if certain doors open. But if you are intentional about what you want, how you're going to go get it, how are you going to help somebody else? it's those things that you're really going to see the return on something. That's interesting. So it's intentionality because the intentionality needs to come before persistence. Mm -hmm. You need to have a very clear goal of this is where I want to, I want to be. Yes. So um, about where you want to be, most of us have been locked inside for the past 18 months. What's your yes. vacation? You know, we've been talking about wanting to go to Turks and Caicos for a long time. And I think that that's where, like, when we break out and go do something, that's where I want to go. I want to be, I don't know, on a hut on the water where I'm, you would think I wouldn't want to be secluded with how secluded we've been during COVID. But I think just the beautiful beaches there, having some great food and just relaxing um, would be really nice because it's been hectic during COVID, um, you know just things happening and trying to deal with emotionally and mentally, you know, how to process things while still working and taking care of kids at home. Um, so I think a, a relaxing beach vacation would be uh, what I would want. I'm with you on that one. I love beaches. That sounds great. Amber, thanks so much for taking the time to join us today. It's always fun talking to you. Thanks, Anne. Great to see you.